Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to tonight's Echo Means Business Pro Networking Live event. Um, this is an ongoing series, and tonight's uh, series is talking about improving the mindset of landscapers. Um, as you know, Echo Means Business has been around for six years. We're an online community. Um, we're the only community for the green industry. We're, you know, we talk about everything green industry. You can go on to Echo Means Business, uh, sign up for free access. Uh, you can learn about some good pro rewards, some all kinds of great member aspects that you can think of. You know, we can even you got us right now. You can even talk to us live if you want to. So but tonight's guest is I got uh, three great guests. Nick Carlson from Dawson Manufacturing, JC from the Long Squad Mowing and Ma from Dirty Deeds. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves, kind of tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll go on in. Nick, let's go with you. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Nick Carlson, uh, owner and founder of Dawson Manufacturing, home of the mulch mate, uh, cart mate, and truck mates. Um, the company started because I uh, I had a need in my old landscaping business that I started when I was 15 years old with $7 worth of fuel and uh, grew that business. And, of course, with growing comes growing pains. And you got to be smart. And I just tried to find a way to fix my pains and then thought, wow, I think I can help the rest of the world and the rest of the industry with these products. And the rest is history, as they say. That's awesome. JC, let's hear a little bit about you. What's going on, everybody? So uh, my name is JC. I'm a single owner and operator of Lawn Squad and Mowing. I'm actually based out of uh, Spencer, Massachusetts. I run a part-time mowing business. I'm going into my third year. Um, been a part of the Echo uh, UAG program for this is my second year, uh, first year as a council member, along with Scott. And uh, just learning as I go along with uh, some of the many pros that are on here and just pretty much the whole green industry, just um, just running the business and uh, getting the job done. Awesome. Awesome. Ma, let's hear about a little bit about you and your company. Well, I'm a uh, Molly. I'm a owner operator co-owner me and my husband paul run uh, dirty deeds here in southeast texas uh, it's just a little small family owned business echo mean biz echo means business website has been a lifesaver for us uh this is my second year with the uag just like jc and uh hope another year next year as well just we'll have to wait and see cool. That is awesome. I'm glad you guys are both here. I'm glad everybody's here today. Um, I'm Scott. I'm from Landscapes by Acme. I got the tallest spike here, uh, probably all throughout the green industry. So you cannot miss me when you come to GIE. I will be walking around with the tallest spike ever. Um, come take pictures. But I've been in the lawn, lawn and landscape business for 25 years. Um, I've been a member of UAG for three years now, um, council member this year. Uh, it's a great honor to be on this and to be able to talk about everything that we need to talk about. So um, we're going to go right on into how we're going to improve our mindset as a landscaper. Um, I got a couple questions I want to go over and kind of see what, all everybody's you know answers and stuff and see what we can come off with. Uh, it's been said that landscapers often take the hammer and nail approach to dealing with physical and mental stress. Um, this means stress can per be perceived as many different things, you know, when problems come awry. Um, how do you guys deal with it so you guys don't get burned out? Um, Nick, I mean, you you ran a landscape business for years, I, I'm assuming, before you became, you know, you got your truck mate. So how did you kind of deal with stress before you got burnt out? Well, and to be honest, at first I didn't. <laughs> and it took many, right. many, many uh, years of failing at that to um sit down and decide how how was i what what was i going to accept and what was i not going to accept and one thing that i learned was you know in that industry in the in the landscaping and the lawn care industry you know it's your job to problem solve for your customers and just coming to that realization just that basic realization kind of took a load off me way back when and um it, you know you just sit down and think about you know what you're willing to accept you know say a customer is coming at you with a problem, you can either go in there and, and react, or you can be proactive in, in those situations 
And the one thing I always want to remind people when I'm dealing with either my employees or my customers is in hard times, hard times create heroes when people step up, right? And so when there's a problem, it's your opportunity to pounce. And you can look at that and you can go, what was me? Or you can go into those opportunities or into those, there are opportunities and go, this is a, this is a chance to make myself look good, my brand look good, and to, to be someone's hero and turn that into cash. And so dealing with stress, honestly, if you, if you can just completely flip your mindset of what all society's taught you and just say, no, I, I'm just going to reframe this whole situation and turn it into my benefit and be the, someone's hero, you're going to have people come out of the woodwork trying to help you and to help your brand, help your business, because they're going to see you're a problem solver. And the less fear that you allow in and the more just sit down, think about it, you're really going to be able to persevere. So it's all about that mindset. And it's all about restructuring what's coming at you and make it nice bite-sized pieces because you can't eat, eat an elephant all at once, just in little chunks. Well said, well said, definitely. I, I agree with you all on that. I mean, that's the only way you can improve it, you know, and that's, that's you know, great wording to say it and best way to say it. Uh, JC, how do you how do you deal with stress on that and before you get burned out? I mean, I know you've been in business a couple of years now. Um, you're part time. So how do you kind of deal with I mean, it's got to be definitely a lot more to where you're burned out because you're doing two things. So how do you do that? Yeah, uh, staying optimistic is definitely easier said than done at times. And especially when you start in a business, it could be overwhelming and intimidating too. So I can tell you right off the bat, when I was thinking about starting and running a business, it took me a little while to get there, to even decide that I wanted to act and go forward. But as far as stress um, is involved, it's in this industry or any industry where you run a business, you have work stress and you have home stress, and then you get a combination of the three, which in essence is really tough to deal with if you overwhelm yourself too much. But I find in, in being able to handle that is to make small goals for yourself and make goals that are achievable and then move on to the next one. Um, like Nick was saying, you know, we, we, we are hired to take away some problems from those customers who hire us like they want us to do a problem or solve a problem for them something that they're not able to do a, a lot of my uh most of my customers are are elderly so um for someone to come to their house and take care of their property that's that's a a, a pretty you know a relief for them to have someone to be able to do that but um as far as you know stress comes it's you know we could get overwhelmed overworked um you know a lot of stuff going on but I think uh, we have to kind of find um, an outlet in a sense, but honestly, for me, mowing lawns is therapeutic, so that kind of helps as well too. Um, but you just can't over overwhelm yourself sometimes, and have some confidence in yourself, and you know, just go day by day, one step at a time. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you you got to you know believe in yourself first before you believe in anything else, and that's that's the main thing, and that should be your main goal all throughout your business. Um, Ma, how do you kind of deal with the stress of uh, being and getting burned out? Well, with us, we've learned that you take one problem at a time. Don't try to take everything at once because if you take everything at once, you're going to overwhelm yourself. With me, I've got the business, plus I'm also doing college work. And as you all, they also mentioned, home, home stress as well. You've got to take time and actually work through things. You can't just try and go headstrong. You have to have a plan. Uh, with a lot of times, like they both mentioned with clients, if they're coming with you with a problem, you're going to have to figure out, okay, how do I need to handle this? Do I need to call someone else in that might be a little more experienced in what this issue is? Do I need to research it? Or do I need to come to a compromise? You've always got to put your pride aside a lot of times and be like, okay, well, I'm doing this just for the money. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. But at the same time, your health and everything else is a lot more important than chasing the money a lot of times. That yard's going to be there. But be willing to step aside and let someone else more experienced step in if it has to, if there's a problem that you just can't solve. Don't add extra stress to yourself just because you think you have to. 
Correct. Correct. I mean, there's stress everywhere. Um, Angel does say a good point about, you know, not to take your, your work stress home. It's, you know, as a business owner, and I've been there through 25 years, um, I actually started another business a couple of years ago. And uh, it's kind of hard not to take it home, especially, you know, when you, your partner is actually, you know, in it with you. OK, so, uh, you know, I know with my her husband, you know, runs the business with her. My wife runs, you know, another business with me. So it's kind of hard not to say when you're at home, like, hey, this this customer called you or when they call you it's 24 hours a day. But you got to learn how to turn it off. Um, I've learned over the last couple of years to be able to turn off when I get home and say, hey, I'm not answering my phone call. It's after seven o'clock. I can spend my time with my family and be able to take that and relieve some of that stress. Um, I know a lot of business owners that that just keep on that phone call as, as long as they can because they don't want to lose that customer. You know, and a customer will respect you if you, you know, say, hey, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you yesterday because it's after seven o'clock. I'm with my family and I want to spend time with my family. They're going to respect you and, you know, come back to you and help you uh, anytime you need. Um, stress is always something you got to learn to delegate. Like that's been said, you got to learn how to, you know, take little bits at time. And that's, you know, I get stressful a lot and, you know, you just, it's hard. It's sometimes it takes me a couple minutes, you know, an hour to, to sit down and actually think about it. Um, and then once I start thinking about it and discuss it with my wife, I can, I can figure out the stress and, and just take away with it and not have it for the rest of the day. So, you know, that's the best thing I can say for you guys. You all said some great things. I think maybe hopefully we cleared up some things for some people, but, uh, there's tons of more stuff. Uh, my other question here, is it clear that the landscaping industry has a culture of resilience? Um, when it comes to mental and physical health problems, could business owners play a role in changing the culture and how so? I mean, I know there's a lot going on uh, with COVID and, uh, you know, I know it probably affects Nick with uh, getting, getting supplies. Mm -hmm. um, supplies is a definitely a big problem now. How do you deal with that? And is there a, a way to, you know, ease it back? What do you think, Nick? Well, um, you know, from a manufacturer's standpoint, there is um, there's a number of ways you can combat it. Um, one of the main things when I started the company was I always had three three different forms of of, of product coming in, right? So if I had if I had a part number M zero dash one zero nine four, right? What pick a pick a part number, right? I would always have three vendors that I could go with that material from no matter what. And so I try to make every part repeatable, um, every mulch made out there, every cart made out there, all the parts are interchangeable. So design is very important. Um, we try to reduce the amount of part numbers we have, meaning we don't want to have too many parts involved with something because later on down the road, that's going to be a bad design because someone's going to have to replace, you know, extra parts or have to take on or off more parts and pieces. So design is key for that side. Um, for the landscaping side, the way I combat a lot of it was just scheduling. I, I would try, I built my business so big uh, to the point where I had huge commercial crews, I had residential crews. And the reason I did that was to try to help with that labor issue. The labor issue is nothing new. Um, well, I started my company in 2000 and I went through the 2001 9-11 crisis. If, if anybody's old enough watching, they're going to remember that there was, there was a little, a little stumble there right at the beginning of my, my young little business. And then, uh, I went through the 2007, 2008, 2009, whatever you want to call it, uh, recession, which was absolutely horrible, but it taught me a lot. And then when COVID hit, I had a lot of landscapers come to me and said, how am I going to get through this? And I said, everyone's going to be home and everybody's going to want to improve their stuff and they're too lazy to do it, or they just don't know how. And right. so you got to get in your customer's mindset, see how, you know, how that's going to be able to, uh, how it's going to affect your business and then how you're going to get around all that. So just scheduling, if you can schedule your way through it, even if you're a one man show, or in my case, I was a 30 man show. Um, at one point I, it was me when I started and then I ended up in a multi-million dollar spot. So I've, I've played, I've gone from nothing to substantial, not, I'm not Davy tree or bright view by any means, right. but, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I saw a lot of different chapters of my life had struggles and 
And the way I got through a lot of it was just, you know, schedule time. I block out special little, I block out my own personal time. I block out my estimating time and I would control it and I would share it with my customers. I would share it with my employees and I would just structure my day every 30 minutes. And then that was, that's how I got through all those crazy times. So I, I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, definitely scheduling things out, especially with jobs and stuff. It's, it's very important to do that. Um, you know, I don't know what you guys think, JC and Ma, but definitely, I mean, it has helped out. I mean, over the 25 years, I've been the same kind of with you, a couple of different crews. We had a commercial crew at one point um, and residential crew and then a landscaping crew. And it's the best thing is to be able to schedule and say, this guy's going here, this guy's going there and then reiterate it to the customer. Um, I always used to call the customer and say, hey, we'll be out there Friday and say, we're going to do this landscaping job depending on if we get the job before you done. Um, but I'll let you know by the end of the night if we're not going to be there tomorrow. So that way they're knowing ahead of time, hey, we're going to be out there tomorrow still. you know. And if, if something happens, I can call them that night right before five o'clock and say, hey, we're not going to be there tomorrow morning. We might be there at noon. You know, it, it helps out. It helps the customer know that you're going to be there. You're going to provide for them. Um, you know, I, I think all these crises, like you said, 9-11 definitely has changed me. Uh, you know, the, the housing crisis, you know, it did, you know, our business did drop a little bit, you know, and then COVID it's, I think COVID helped my business out even more because I, like you said, there's people out there that they want to put that money into the landscape and they don't want us, they don't want to sit around and wait no more. They're, they want to be out there and, and do this job that, you know, they want to get out there, be at that fire that should be in the back of and Nick's garage or, or wherever it's going to be at, but they want to, they want to enjoy their life and they want to enjoy their, their property. Um, what about you, JC? How do you deal with, I know you with being part-time, how do you deal with the customers coming at you on certain stuff like that? So I don't, no matter if you're a big business or a small business, you, the key to it is that you have to be organized and if you're not organized, you're, I guarantee you're not going to be successful. You may have a, a big company, but you might find yourself underwater if you're not organized and just trying to keep up, keep up, keep up and continue to add that stress where it's not, it's not fulfilling anymore. It's not, uh, it's not a joy that you once had. Um, you know, when we envision of starting a, a business, we have a dream, like it's going to be glorious. It's going to be great. We're going to be successful. But then, five, six, seven years down the road, like we talked about, you get burnt out and then you're just like, oh, I don't want to go back into work today. I just got to get this done. But um, someone in the chat or in the comments mentioned delegation. And I could see that for a business too, right? Uh, we were just talking about, Ma mentioned about not carrying too much weight on your shoulders. Um, you know, you can't micromanage as well too. So um, that's one thing. But as far as a part-time for me, um, I, I think organization, I was forced to organize. I was never good at it, but I also had it in the back of my mind, knowing that I had to be organized in order to get to where I want to be. Um, so, you know, there, there's still some stress I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I, we're only human, everybody does. But as far as customers, you know, like instances for an example, um, since I'm part-time, my schedule isn't, my availability isn't um, any time of the week. So I could only mow lawns on certain days. And if weather becomes a problem, um, you know, and I'm not able to get to that property to mow, um, it may take a couple of days for me to get there. And there are times where I've experienced, you know, some customers get maybe a little impatient because I wasn't able to get out there. But, um, but I think communication is also a key role as well too. the relationship that you have with your, uh, your customers. Um, be straightforward with them. Let them know what your situation is. I, every customer that I've uh, I've dealt with, uh, you know, I've I've let them know. Hey, listen, I do this on a part time basis. I'll do my best to you know to to provide the services that I can for you whenever you need. So if I'm not able to do it on this certain date, I'll I'll you know I'll make up for it or I'll send them a message and let them know. Hey, listen, I wasn't able to come today. I'll be able to come the next day and, and take care of your lawn. Um, so communication really is 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 huge huge factor. Be real. Um, part of this session here with um, what we're talking about today is is about professionalism and your mindset. You know, um, you know, just be realistic. Um, be as professional as you can. 
put you, your, fest, your best foot forward at all times. And um, people respect that. You know, people will def definitely appreciate that. And, and that you being genuine with your customers, I think, will help your business in the long run. Correct. Correct. I mean, communication is definitely key. Um, any, like Josh says, uh, anyone can mow a lawn, but everyone can can communicate. So you got to communicate with all your customers. And I, I definitely agree with that. Ma, what do you what's your thoughts on the whole, you know, communication and everything and organization? I know you're smaller, well, I too. I have to agree with both Nick and JC. Communication is key. Organization is key. Scheduling is key, but adapting to the situation also helps as well. Like in our area, we get hit with a lot of hurricanes and major storms like that being in the south. So when you can't mow, you start stressing out. You have to adapt. So we start cutting trees that are over roads, stuff like that to help out as well, to help eliminate that stress. Communication with us, we're our clients. We write them on Sunday of each week or we call them. And then we do so again the day before things happen. We have made it to a point that with our clients, if something comes up, let us know. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't try to act all prideful. Be honest with me. Hey, I can't afford it this week. Or, hey, this come up. We understand like that's life. Things happen. But scheduling with us, because we are semi part time, full time. Paul does still have a full time job. So we're a little more flexible, but at the same time, it can be a little more hectic too. But as long as you stay organized, you communicate and you actually schedule, you'll succeed in anything. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with you. I mean, it's got to be definitely hard for you, Mom, especially with all the hurricanes coming through and all that stuff. Um, and you, like you said, you've got to adapt. Um, you know, it just depends on what the weather's going on. And I think all of us need to learn that and, and I think that's why we provide so many services um, as a landscaper. You know, you got to provide the, the, you know, the mowing, the landscaping, the tree removal, if you can, um, you know, if you don't have them services, I feel like, you know, I heard, I heard a good thing from a customer the other day that he said, he goes, the way that the world's going, eventually it's going to be hard, you know, to get that landscaping job because of the, you know, everything's getting harder to get. Um, but you're, you're always going to have the grass there. You're always going to have the trees that are going to have to be pruned back. He's, you know, you're not, you know, a lot of people might have a hard time getting the plants, but you're still going to have the landscape. You're mowing, your mowing is going to be there nonstop. And, you know, it's a good stress reliever. Uh, Nick was talking about it earlier. Definitely. It's a great reliever. No matter if you're out there for a couple hours or if you're out there all day, you can take your mind off it. Uh, what are some key growth tips you guys got for hiring and new season. Uh, Nick, what was some of the great tips you could give for hiring people when you came up to a new season? Well, it all comes down to, you know, where you're at in your business. How big is your business? How many people you have? Is it just you? Is it, you know, four or five guys? You know, what, what is it? Um, I, I guess I'll talk after I had a couple employees, one of the big, big things that I learned, actually an employee suggested this to me one day and I was like, Hey man, run with it. And it was, let your people help you find people because ultimately at the end of the day, they're going to be working with those new guys. And so I helped, I helped facilitate finding people. And I would use the same, you know, same things that everybody finds online, whether it's monster indeed or zip recruiter. I've tried a lot of those and, and had some success, but the, the one thing that always seemed to help was I set a schedule and every Wednesday I set aside three hours to do interviews and I would constantly be interviewing people. And I had this big black book, um, of just people's information, whether they went on and got hired somewhere else or not, I still kept their information. And so we would constantly be running ads. We'd have little signs on the trucks and I would just tell my guys, Hey, go talk to your friends. I know you talk to a bunch of people when you go home, find that guy that you really like that you think would work well with you. And I kind of put a little bit of responsibility on the, on the guys. And it honestly, it came through really well. And I didn't have to do a whole lot except for the initial interview. And then I'd let my, some of my employees, some of my managers do some interviewing and that seemed to really help a lot because it, it you know, made them feel like they're a big part of the team. So, you know, integrating your people into the company and giving them a role and a purpose is, is a huge, huge thing that can help. That's definitely, definitely. I mean, I know when, 
when I had, uh, I used to have up to 12 guys a season and it was always, I could always ask a friend and say, Hey, do you know anybody that, that might want some work, you know, or I'd ask family members. There's always somebody out there that knows somebody that's looking for work and, you know, that might be a great, you know, candidate for work for you. So, um, JC, do you plan on hiring anybody ever, or are you planning on kind of being solo for a long time? For now, I, I plan on remaining solo. Um, you know, I, I do pro want to progress to be able to, to do more lawns and more properties at some point. Right. And I think uh, if that situation does does happen, um, on you know, not putting more on my shoulders that I could actually carry, I think it might, you know, I could see it in the future, maybe potentially having someone um, to help out. It doesn't have to be two or three employees, maybe just one more person, right. a friend of mine or, or somebody that I know very well to start off. And then, you know, um, I, I, I do have goals. I have plans. Um, but at the very moment right now, I'm just I'm still doing it on my own. But hopefully someday uh, I could progress to that to that point. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, you know, it's always good to have that extra person, um, you know, Right now, we're, I'm just a smaller group right now. We only have three people that work for us. And, you know, it do, you don't have to be the biggest company out there to make a dent in anything. You know, it's all about making it look perfect, uh, making the customer happy and, and being the customer satisfied with you. And they'll pass your name around from person to person. And that's that's the main thing. And you don't have to be that million dollar company if you don't want to. Um, you know, I see a lot of people that are like starting off that are like, Hey, I want to be, you know, like, like Nick said, Brightview one time, you know, you don't have to be Brightview at one point, you know, you eventually you'll get there. If you, that's what you want to be, you know, more power to you. You know, I, I tried and, you know, there's a lot of hassle there and there's a lot of stress there and, and sometimes it's not totally all worth it, you know? So Ma, I know you have your, your, your husband with you and you have the littles with you to help out do you plan on how are you hiring if you plan on hiring in the future are you there ma yeah i'm here for some reason it blacked out on me for a brief second yeah i seen that um so, so let's I, move on if i could add to that like so yeah. you know you were mentioning how some businesses want to you know immediately get right on the bat and, and have these big goals and dreams and Sometimes that could be instant stress that you're adding on to yourself before you even begin. You know, it's right. like jumping in, jumping in the deep end of the pool without knowing how to swim yet. You have to kind of walk the shallow section of the pool and then gradually get in there as well, too. So, you know, when you start a business, um, you know, make a list and write things down and, you know, little little by little, you'll get to where you want to be. But don't walk into something with with heavy stress on your shoulders already. And then, you know, it's, you kind of setting yourself up for failure at that point. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think I might be back. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that guys. No, we just figured it was the fog and the rain. So, you know, <laughs> so it probably is. Yeah. There she goes again. Right. Right. Hurry up. We're having problems, but okay. So what are some routine ticks, tricks to take off the business owner's hat you guys use? Um, Nick, I, I'm assuming you, you love your motorsports. So, you know, I see that cars back there. So I'm assuming that, you know, might be your way of taking the owner's hat off. Yeah, it, it may be. Uh, oh, she's back. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, hopefully for good this time. Let's you want to finish what you were saying? Yeah, go ahead, Ma. We stick with family because nobody's going to be as passionate about your business as you are. Right. So we hire some, but it's very rare. We probably stay small as we are for now. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you. I mean, definitely. I feel like you know, <laughs> family is definitely key huh, in your business, especially you know your your younger ones growing up i mean they follow in your footsteps a lot sometimes so you know that definitely can be a help so go ahead nick um so just you know different stages of your life uh i'm 35 
And, you know, I've been doing this since I was 15, so 20 years. Um, now I've, I've morphed over to the manufacturing side. But, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself to, to do something big like what you see behind me. So that's a, that's a combination of 20 years of hard work. Um, I do put a ton on my shoulders to, to get to this level. It's kind of what I do. I'm not saying it's right for everyone. Um, but do simple things like, and just stop and go get a cup of coffee. Um, you know, go to the drive range and chip a few golf balls. You need to, just like you schedule your time for everyone else, you need to kind of look in the mirror and schedule the time you're staring at. Um, to schedule the time to the person you're staring at in the mirror. Um, I, I, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything other than a lot of physical stuff, whether it's going for a, a hike or uh, biking on a trail. Uh, I'm, I'm just into the outdoors, no matter what season it is. I really don't, I really don't care what it is. So my point to it is, is, you know, a lot of people want to say they want to go buy a really nice car. Oh, if I had this Mustang or this Corvette or, or pick a vehicle, I'll be happy because it'll be my toy. And what it ends up doing is it ends up putting all the stress on you because maybe you're not ready financially. Uh, maybe you're too young. Maybe the insurance is going to be too high because you're under 25 years old, whatever the case may be. The worst thing you want to do is add more stress to yourself. So pick, you know, start. You know, JC said it earlier. He said, don't, don't take on too much. Um, that's really, really important. And, and, you know, I'm one of those guys that will take on too much. I guilty as charged. Um, and I've had to learn over the years to just, take a breath and step back and just, just take something real small. And, and, and you, everyone's, everyone likes different things. So that's what I would go after. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with you. Uh, what do you think, JC? What's your best thing to take the owner's hat off? Work to live and don't live to work. Um, good, good words. It's, 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 you, you have, like I said earlier, you have to have an outlet, and, you know, just kind of remember that, you know, why you're doing this, what's, what's the purpose? What is your purpose? Why are you doing this? You know, it, it's, you, you have to remember that life isn't just about working and, you know, it's tough sometimes when we're trying to catch up with life and trying to, uh, um, you know, pay, pay bills and things in that manner and such, but um, you have to have a takeaway because if you just go home, and you sit on the couch afterwards and you're just waiting to go to bed to go back to work again tomorrow you're not really living a fulfilling life you have to have some some type of separation you have to have something that you go to to kind of just get your mind off of things um you know as as we talked about scheduling right we schedule work we schedule uh, uh mowing properties how about schedule something for yourself you know on this day i'm going to do this for me or on this day, you know, I'm going to go over here. I've always wanted to do this for a while or just kind of take a road trip or something. It doesn't have to be anything expensive either. Um, but, you know, it's it's you just got to remember that, you know, you could overwork yourself. And then talking about stress, you're, you're bringing that work stress home and now your health is deteriorating. Now you have other stuff to worry about. You know, you're, you're finding health issues, going to the doctor, anxiety, stress, um, depression all those things. And it's just, it's, it's not a good combination to have. So I think um, just being able to kind of like set time for yourself, it could be something simple, just something that brings you joy for a little bit and then get back to work afterwards. You know, you have to have that escape, take a break every, every now and then. Correct. Correct. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with that one. Um, you got to have something. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy uh, spending time coaching soccer. Um, taking my kids to everything that they got to go to. I mean, it's, it's, you know, kids are a big part of my life. Um, you know, we help out and do as much as we can with our kids and spend, try to spend as much time as I can. Do you guys plan any hobbies or family vacations to get your mind off? Um, I know we do, our family uh, takes a vacation around Thanksgiving time. Um, I know that's a slower time for us here. Um, but we like to go at least once a year and just get away and do something. Uh, I, you know, hobby wise, I do all kinds of stuff. I do golf. Um, I, you know, it's, I love digging a hole and just burying things in it and, uh, seeing what digs up, you know, a couple of years down the road. But, uh, what about you, JC? You got any hobbies? 
Uh, as you're talking, I'm thinking of one of them just laughing at myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so during, uh, during in 2020, during like the winter of COVID, uh, I get on Amazon, I'm just bored. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I, I want to learn how to play the harmonica. And, nice. uh, and I end up on Amazon. We were just talking about Amazon, funny enough. I order a, a, a harmonica with a book and I was able to, uh, to learn the uh, harmonica part of uh, Piano Man. And nice. that's about it. But, uh, you know, I'm like, it, it's not, it's, it, it's very hard. It's very hard. But uh, I know Ma's um, uh, live feed cut out. Yeah. But I know I'm confident that I could speak for her because she told me this uh, one time is that her escape and my escape as well, too, is actually going to the GIE. Um, yeah. It's something to look forward to. I think a lot of us have that same um, mentality when it comes to like, you know, just taking that time off. I know a lot of landscapers, um, you know, schedule that time off um, from their properties because they're away for maybe a week or so down in Louisville. But um, that's something that her, I know, because she, like, like I said, she mentioned it to me, uh, her and Pa and the family, she brings them all out to Louisville. And that's pretty much their yearly vacation, which is, you know, it's pretty cool because in a sense, it's also the same way for me as well, too. Um, but that's, you know, my, my my failure at harmonica. I think maybe one day I'll pick it up again and hopefully try to learn some more uh, chords or something. But, uh, yeah, that was, you know, one thing. I, I like watching baseball. Um, I like just going on road trips, uh, driving around, um, even if it's something simple as just grabbing a cup of coffee somewhere and, you know, taking a ride on my day off and, you know, even uh, mowing the lawn at my own house. That's therapeutic for me, too. So I enjoy doing that. Definitely, definitely. So everybody goes to DIE. I mean, yeah, it is a great escape for everybody. Chris says it's a great escape for him. Uh, Nick's going to have a whole bunch of stuff I'm hearing I seen on his thing, he's got five new items. Maybe he's got one in his garage there, but I doubt it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if he does, he's hiding it somewhere. If you all watch the video real good, maybe you'll see a sneak peek. Um, just kidding. Uh, it's not there. So uh, you'll see it in a couple more weeks. We're not far from it. Uh, definitely see all of us at the GIE Social Media Lounge. Uh, we're going to be there. Um, how do you guys uh, – Dylan says he wants to be a hundred percent landscaping build eventually. Is there, I feel that, you know, you got to have, like I said before, you got to have something to, to jump back to. Um, I know Nick, you've probably got stressful with your business, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you got bigger and then you needed something to help with, you know, mulch and all that. So that's why you help, you know, you made mulch made, correct? Mm -hmm. So, yep. So is there a good way to deal with that stress of being so full, um, you know, of landscaping and all that? Well, um, success is your best revenge. Success will offset all that stress. And uh, what I always did was I, when things got stressful, I just looked at myself and just said, you got more in you. You know, you got more in you because most people are acclimated to the things they're used to. and you only know what you know. And I'm the kind of guy that I'm going to push. I'm going to push harder than anyone else, or at least that's how I feel. And, um, what I would do is I would push myself to the point where so solo saying, you know, Dylan's saying he's at 60, 40. I kind of want to mix these two if, if I can. Right. Um, what I would do and I, I advise a lot of people to do is I always push myself to grow out of the mowing into the landscaping I'd schedule myself out, you know, six full days a week and I would bury all the landscaping early in the week and all the mowing towards the end of the week. And then ultimately, once I filled that up, then what I would do is I'd start jacking my prices up and wh whoever stayed, it was like, cool, profitable. The people that left were like, man, didn't want them anyway. And right. so when you do that, you kind of thin the herd while creating more profits and that pushes the company further and further and further. And what you'll find is the people that are, you know, paying more for the mowing and willing to pay that probably willing to pay you more for all the landscaping work, or they know people that do because clearly they got more money. So, right. um, you kind of use, you take the stressful things and you look at them and go, okay, that's what I got to work on. Find the problem, solve that problem. And typically the problem is not making enough money. And when you start jacking your prices up, you'll find out who's going to stay and who's going to go. And that will free up for more landscaping and make you more money when you're actually working. 
Correct. Correct. I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, you know, I think, you know, we always raise prices every year. Um, and, you know, I look at the jobs that are profitable um, and say, do I want to continue to do them? Um, and then I jack them a good amount of money if that's the case. So that way, you know, like Nick said, you're going to either, they're either going to stick with you or they're going to leave. And you, you, you know, you know who wants to stick with you when you actually raise the prices. Um, big question for everybody is how do you be, break the mindset of being an employee of your own business to becoming a business owner? Um, Ma, let's see if you can get in real quick on this one before the fog rolls in on you. Can you? It's kind of hard, isn't it? You no, know, I'm, I'm, I had to switch cameras. Can y'all hear me okay? Yep, yep, we got you. All right, the breaking the mindset of being an employee, you've also got to remember at one point you were somebody else's employee. You weren't always a business owner. A lot of people start side businesses because of the fact that they want that extra income and realize, oh, I can make doing I can make money doing this. I'll do this instead. You've got to remember that everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. So you've got to re you've got to put yourself in their position because you were there. Don't automatically assume, well, now that I'm the business owner that I have all say. No, you've got to listen to everybody else around you too. take their opinions into account because they're the ones working for you. They're going to be the ones on site more than you are, unless you were like me and JC, where we actually are on site most of the time. You, you've got you, you've got to remember not to try and put yourself above somebody else. Very good. Very good. I, you know, definitely agree with that one. JC, what do you think? I mean, you're kind of, you know, employee still somewhere and working on your own. Yeah. So, the, I mean, I don't know if I'm doing it the right way or if my mindset's the right way, but when I'm out there on the field doing properties, I like to think of myself more as an employee. Um, always learning, trying to learn new, more things and new things, representing a company, you know, in a sense, being proud to be hired by them. And by them, I just mean, say me, you know, but when I'm at home and I'm doing, you know, my, my, my um, scheduling or, you know, whatever, that's when I'm the business owner. You know, when I'm home, I reassess everything that I did that day and said, you know, I, I try to think to myself, well, what could I do better? Um, how could I go out and seek more properties? You know, what could I do to kind of progress my, my business? Um, and that, that's all thought of at, you know, at home, I don't have a, 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 re a retail office or anything like that I do everything at home, but I think the separation, you know, and I think that, that kind of makes you appreciate things a little more, um, and, and to be more humble too, because just because you're a business owner doesn't mean you have all the answers to everything. Um, you could have a, a big title in life and you might not, you know, you might, you don't know it all, you know, so we're always all learning whether I'm um, Scott, you could probably say 20 years plus in the business and you're learning new things every single day. Cool. Yeah. But, uh, but I think if, you know, for me, what works is I treat myself as an employee. And then when I'm home, I, I put on the role as, as a business owner. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, definitely always keep learning is definitely a key. Um, I'm always learning year to year. Um, I do have a state pesticide license and, you know, they only allow us to go every three years, but I end up going every year. And it's, it's not about, you know, re, you know, relearning all the same stuff. There's always something there that they're going to teach you that you might not have thought of. And, you know, by even, you know, going on YouTube and looking at stuff and, you know, seeing how certain somebody else might do something, you're going to learn something. Um, you got to always keep learning. And that's the only way to keep growing is to keep learning. Um, Nick, what do you think about this topic here? Well, um, one of the examples I love using um, is Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was an employee of the Chicago Bulls. He was not a boss. He was not an owner. And that man went out there and he put his best foot forward every second of every day, even though in the very beginning, people didn't say he was going to amount to very much. And he said, you know what? Watch this. And so he went to work, he put in the time, he put in the effort and he decided that no matter what happens, I'm going to give it every single thing I have. 
And a good owner and a good boss is going to give their people, their customers, themselves, their families, everything they've got to make it to a place that's going to help everyone involved. And so when you go into it with a positive mindset, you create the value, you're going to show your people, and then that's just going to manifest itself through the company and into your clients and everywhere around you. And it's, I, I've tested it, and it infects people. Positivity infects people to a point to like, they just, they just drive. Right. And so like for me, for instance, I take that positivity and I try my guys at trade shows like GIE, like, why'd you talk to that person? He's not going to buy a mulch mate. Yeah. But you know what? I may have just helped him. And guess what? Now he's one of my sales guys. So putting, put, putting forth your best foot forward and infecting people with positivity, that that's how you motivate people. And that's how you're a good leader. I, I, totally I, agree. I add to that too. I, that, that was yeah. A tremendous point I, uh, that's great because it's like wh what what you're doing in essence is you're taking stress right and we all look at stress as a negative thing like you know we don't want stress but sometimes stress could be a positive thing and how he's explaining about michael jordan is that he's been in stressful situations and these some of these athletes like for example they do well under pressure right we do well under pressure at some some points and sometimes in our in our lives so if you're you remain optimistic and you're able to okay listen i am in this situation recognize that it's a tough situation to be when be in how am i going to overcome this and that's what brings the best out of everybody and that that's i love that you use michael jordan because that's a perfect example and one of my favorite athletes as well too to add to that but that's a great example definitely definitely uh, Mike Gunn asks, uh, get it done by gun. I don't know what he's getting done right now, but what would you guys say to thinking of leaving the job to start a business? Words of encouragement and advice. Um, I know I have one good word of advice is don't ever give up. Um, I know in the first couple of years I started my business, I was in a car accident and I will pretty much, I have a whole metal hit because of it. And the doctor came to me one day when I was in there and I was in a wheelchair and he said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I do landscaping. I do mowing. He said, you're not going to do that forever. I said, yes, I am. And still to this day, I still do it. And, you know, I'm never giving up. I'm going to keep going and going. And that's the way you should do is to keep pushing forward and try. If that's what you want to do, push forward to it and keep going and keep positive. Um, that's what I got. I don't know. What do you got, JC, on this? What your words of advice, encouragement of starting your own business? You hit the nail on the head as far as not letting people tell you what you can't do. Um, there is always a solution to a problem. It might not be the easiest solution to find. And if it's a difficult solution to try to find, and if you really want it that bad, you will work to find what's going to work for you to get to where you want to be. Um, you know, a, a lot of I, I've talked to a lot of people throughout the years and just to kind of throw it in there, echo means business. Another reason why you should sign up, because these are the type of questions that uh, if you have, there's a full community of people that are willing to give you their experience and to tell you what they did to get to where they want to be. Um, and I, I'm, I'm plugging it in there, but in, in all right. essence, it, it's very true. Um, there are many questions that I've had and just throughout the years talking to people, I've, I've come across uh, a lot of people that have transitioned from a full time job um, doing mowing a part time and then, you know, going that route. Um, I don't know for me, myself personally, if that's going to be the case. Um, I think I like to think of myself as having like two loves when it comes to like employment. But, um, you know, I never know. Uh, it's 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 not a closed book. It's something that maybe will um Will be an idea and then maybe at some point later on i can decide if that's something that i want to do but uh i and to add just lastly on that i think um you know um have confidence in yourself um don't fear it too much have a healthy fear and just make sure you're doing things the right way to set yourself up um one step at a time definitely definitely ma what do you think what's your best words of encouragement and advice Always be willing to learn. Never, never think that you know everything. And like y'all said, don't give up. Nothing worth anything is not worth fighting for. If you really, really want it, fight. Fight every day for it. Put things aside. Find a support group. 
if like JC said with echo means business, it's we're there and other pros that are in the business that are on there as well. They're there to help a new business starting out. No question is a stupid question. If you have a question and you're curious about it, ask, somebody's going to know the answer. Having a good support group behind you to encourage you will also help make you go a lot further than you think you can. There's going to be dark days. There's going to be times when you're just like, I give up. I'm done. Throw up the hands. I forget it. This was stupid. But then you get up that next day and remember, it's a whole new day. It's a whole new slab that you're working with. Don't let negativity pull you down. If it's something you really want, go for it. Push. It, you, you can make things happen if you actually put your mind to it. Definitely. Definitely. Nick, what's your good words of encouragement and advice? <laughs> so a little story. Um, I don't know if you can see this car here behind me. It is painted Lambo orange, which is actually a Rincio Borealis. It is uh, over $1,000 a gallon. And we painted this car in this garage ourselves. And it wasn't the first car we painted, but the very first car we painted was one of my race cars. And to kind of full circle this whole thing for you, I had no idea how to paint a race car. I had no idea how to paint any kind of car with any kind of paint. And so we went to a body shop and talked to a body guy. And he goes, man, you can't, you can't paint a car. And I looked at him. I said, dude, you're a drug addict. You can barely stand up. You're telling me I can't paint a car? Seriously? And I looked at him. I said, you see these things right here? You get the same amount that I do. And I'm going to figure it out. And so went to work, asked a bunch of questions, went to the paint shop, said, dude, what do I have to buy? What do I need? And people love to give up information. So they want to show you what they know. Fine. Show me what you know. And you take that information and you run with it and you just, you don't stop until you get it right. And painting a car, you know, yeah, did I screw up the first time? Sure. You sand it out, you paint it again. Next right. day, sun comes up, you got another chance to go at it again. So listen, we all have these, every one of us, you can do it. It's, there's, it's just a matter of saying, that's it. It's over. Going to go do this because I can go work for someone else and make them all the money or I can go do it myself. And that will make you very successful once you turn that on and, and go for it. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with all of you guys. You know, these are all good words of encouragement. Um, you know, I know, like we've all said here, you can always go to Echo Means Business. Um, you know, you can listen to this anytime you want. You can listen to all kinds of different pro networking things that are going on throughout there. You know, there's pro forums there that you're going to be able to talk to any one of us here. Any, you know, a lot of you guys that are out there commenting, you know, they're all on there too. You know, there's, there's tons of people on this forum. So, you know, you got questions, go ask. I mean, that's the best thing you can do. Definitely ask the question. If you're, if you're worried about something, ask a question, you know, you're stressed out about something, ask a question. Somebody will definitely answer you back. You know, I mean, if you want to know, you know, what's Nick's favorite color, you know, he'll, he'll tell you if, if that's what you want to know, you know, if you, don't you want to know. know, yeah, orange, you know, <laughs> hey, so. <laughs> I have, I have one, one thing that yeah. um, I, I'd like to maybe add to that is if you're looking to make that jump, right, go find somebody in, it could be on social media. It could be in your neighborhood, whatever. That's doing exactly what it is that you are wanting to do and go just start mimicking and learning from that person. And they're not going to know exactly the way you want to do it, but you're going to learn enough to get through it. So I, I would suggest go find yourself a mentor. Um, and you may not even meet that person. Like for instance, for me, I don't know if he knows it, but I look at Ed Wright and I go, I want to go copy what that man and his family has done. That's kind of my next goal. And I, in, in my little town here, when I was a landscaper, I had a local guy that I was chasing and then I beat him. And then I was like, all right, now I'm past him. Who's the next guy? And who's the next guy? And I was just constantly chasing and meeting and learning and kind of having a rabbit, if you will. Right. So, so everybody here now hears that Nick's got a mower coming this year. So, so at GIE, watch out for the new mower. Okay. <laughs> so there you go, Nick, I, I, I plugged the new mower. So, okay. Just, just have, have it dropped off. Okay. okay. So <laughs> anyways, we all deal with stress here. Um, definitely, you know, what is the best way to prioritize your mental health, um, over anything else? I mean, you know, we all have mental health. How, how can we, 
resolve this issue and you know everybody get has it you know i know there's a lot of people out there that you know have this problem what can we do to kind of relieve all this you know mental health issues is there anything you guys think of i see everybody's shaking their heads so and go ahead nick go for it say no <laughs> learn to say no control Perfect. your environment it's your life take control of it, it it's the, too many people let other people you know push them around and set your morals set what you believe in and just you know take and make the rules for yourself and stick to those and when someone says no i want you to go this way go no not doing that that's not part of the plan have a plan and that will keep you on track and keep the stress at bay definitely definitely <laughs> I mean, it's, I agree with you. I mean, I'm I, learning to say no more this year than I did in the past. So I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that because somebody else told me that. And um, the first time I heard it, I'm like, that makes complete sense. Like, I don't know why I'm not doing that enough. And, <laughs> you know, some at some points I, I still don't, but I have been doing it a lot more. But it's very true. As far as stress comes, um, you know, obviously nowadays, today's age, it's, it's a little more uh, – vocalize it's out there um, more awareness is being brought to the subject at hand and i think a lot of it you know if if you have to realize when you're not capable of doing something anymore like what your limitations are and then you know maybe confining into somebody else and you know asking a question like ma said and you know seeking somebody's advice you know but you have to realize that you you know listen i'm in a situation right now and i'm stressed out and you know i can't figure it out i need to find an answer let me try to see if somebody has something that they could tell me because that perfect example about saying no is something that i never knew and as simple as that sounds i needed to hear it from somebody else in order to be able to kind of you know move forward with that so definitely definitely ma You've got to force yourself to take time for yourself. Like they said, say no. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid to ask for help. But at the same time, you have to force yourself to stop. Just stop. Even if it's for 30 minutes a day, you have to force yourself to stop. Because if you don't, it can be really bad results. But saying no is harder than a lot of people think it is. But once you get into the routine and get to that point where you know that, hey, look, Maybe it is time to take a break. I appreciate the art, but I can't do it right now. You know, you have to take time for yourself. You have to make time. Even if it's taking your phone and make, setting an alarm for 5.30 every afternoon from 5.30 to 6.30 or whatever and forcing yourself to stop. When that alarm goes off, go to a quiet place, read a book, do something for yourself so you can debrief, you can de-stress. Because if you don't, you're not going to last very long. Definitely. Definitely. Got to take time for yourself. Definitely. Um, Matthew says, what's a good mindset for a 15 year old running a lawn care setup? Um, I don't know. I wasn't 15 when I started my lawn business. Um, I was 19 when I started. Um, and you got you got to be positive. I think, um, you know, you got to keep your head in the game um, and just keep looking forward, you know, Put yourself, make yourself a goal of where you want to be year to year, um, month and month, and and keep striving for that goal. Don't don't ever give up. Like I said, don't ever give up. Um, I'm assuming all you guys have the same words of advice. Ma second, yes. Uh, Nick, any words? Yes. Uh, when I so I started my landscape company, I was 15, and I have this thing that I've actually heard a couple people say they do this, but. Um, I'm a, again, I'm an aggressive guy. I've always kind of been, and it was kill, 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 go out there and kill it. Go out right. there and go like, for instance, me, I have a 1964 and a half Mustang. Go figure. I'm in the cars. Right. And uh, I bought it when I was uh, 15 years old for 700 bucks. It was buried in the mud, found it in the newspaper and bought it from the lady and went out and started the mowing business to fund my racing and building cars. And I just needed like two grand to buy all these parts of this Mustang to help restore the sheet metal and put that goal in front of myself. By the time it was time to buy the metal and I was ready for it, I had like $9,000 wow. at 15 years old. 
Go out there and kill it, Matthew. Kill it. You can do it. Millions of other kids can do it. I did it. I ain't the smartest guy in the world, but I tell you what, I am willing to work my butt off. So you can do it. Definitely. Definitely. I hope that helps you out, Matthew. And if you ever have anything, look one of us up. We'll help you out and give you some good advice. So keep at it, Matthew. Definitely. Um, I know there's a lot of different uh, resources out there um, to help with, you know, how to deal with stress and stuff. I know Echo Means Business is one of them. What other kind of places do you guys go to kind of help you, you know, get some resources for mental health? Anybody know of any places? Um, I mean, besides Nick does. Nick knows everything. I know. <laughs> I've just been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, go find some really good books, read them, listen to them, um, whatever. So one of the books that started me, I'm going to say in the, sec the successful direction was a book called the E-Myth. Um, I didn't read the landscapers version. I read just the regular business version and it really helped, you know, kind of keep things in, in framework that I could understand. So Go read e -Myth. If you haven't, it changed my life forever in 2009. And it took me it took me a couple of years to get what it taught me implemented. Uh, but by the time I righted my ship, I'd go to my local, you know, coffee shop and people would, in, the, in the town would be like, Nick, how'd you do that? You, you exploded overnight. And I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? I've been at this for years. And they, they all of a sudden just block the noise out, get rid of the head trash. Go read e -Myth, and I'm telling you, it'll send you in the right direction. It, it's amazing. Great book. Great book. Definitely is. Uh, definitely look it up. Um, JC, you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so I'm looking at the comments, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm under a little stress right now because I probably shouldn't have told everybody that I practiced the harmonica because now they're expecting me to bring it to GIE. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, as, as far as, uh, as far as resources, I, I think it goes, you know, hand in hand with, um, your, your mental health and your physical health. Um, you know, it, it, when you're, if, if the less stress that you have, obviously the better mental health you're going to have, but if you're, if you're under stress and you're working then physically and mentally, you're going to be exhausted. But just keep conscious uh, awareness of your health. Um, go to your doctor's appointments. Go to your visits. You know, um, it, it, go to your year, yearly physical. I know a lot of times we have our yearly physical. People don't like going to the doctor. You walk in there, the doctor asks you, "Hey, how you doing?" And you tell them, "Yep, I'm good. I'm fine. Okay, see you next year." Five minutes in and out of the doctor's office. That's that's pretty much it. Like, um, usually the doctors ask you questions. Maybe, you know, we should do a better job of asking the doctor questions, you know, hey, listen, I'm, I haven't, I've been having trouble sleeping or, um, you know, uh, I'm always anxious. I'm always, you know, nervous. Uh, I don't know, you know, that as an example, you know, but uh, I think the more you ask people, like you said earlier, people are willing to help out, especially your doctor. That's their job is to help you uh, with your health. It's just not physical uh, ailments. It's, it's, it, there's, there's a lot going on in here. Um, so I think, you know, if, if you seek those questions and you, you, you aren't afraid to step up to ask for help when you need it, I think that's very important. Definitely. Definitely. Ma, you got anything? Well, pretty much the same as them, uh, things we do is as a family, we go to a local gym, you know, doing things like yoga stuff to, to help improve your health, both mentally and physically, or just zoning out. Uh, with a good book, listening to a podcast or some music, just quiet time or just something that will help get your mind off other stuff, any problems that you might have. We, we love Monday through Friday. We go to the gym with our oldest and it's a good bonding moment with us. We actually get to spend time with her, but we're also taking better care of ourselves at the same time. And it definitely helps loosening up those muscles before you got to go mow too. Definitely. Definitely. You know, a good thing to do, um, my dad always used to say this, and I hate to say it, but I don't go to my barber anymore, but he always used to say, go to your barber, sit down, and they'll talk to you for hours if you need to. Um, you know, they're they're good listeners. Um, I don't go there no more because, you know, I'm trying to try to grow it as much as I can before GIE. Um, but, you know, definitely do what you got to do. There's always somebody out there that you can talk to. Um, you know, and, you know, 
find a way to relieve that stress, take the time off, do, you know, go to the gym, go, go mow grass. You know, there's a lot of different things to relieve stress and, and help with your mental health. Um, you know, tons of stuff out there. Uh, I see tons of comments. I know, I don't know how much longer we're going to go here. Let's see here. Uh, all right. This is about time. We're going to start wrapping up. Um, so it is end of the night guys. Uh, I want to thank everybody that has joined us live tonight. Um, thank all, all my panelists that were here with me, all the guests, you guys were great. Some great knowledge here. Definitely. Um, mark your calendars. Next pro event is coming up in two weeks on September 30th, live here on YouTube, uh, 8 PM, uh, Eastern time. So if you're a little bit late because you think it's, you know, central time, always make sure you got the right time. EST means Eastern time. Central time means central time. PST means Pacific, just to kind of throw it out there. Um, but we'll be back with another EMB. Ask me anything. That's the next one coming up. Okay. So there's going to be a couple guests from the UAG group on there. You can ask them any question you want. Nothing's too, too, you know, out there as far as I know. I mean, there was a lot of good questions asked last time. Um, definitely, you know, I still haven't got my hair, hair person to, you know, give me some free samples, but definitely, hopefully they will eventually. Uh, remember, you can watch this recording on echomeansbusiness.com. Uh, you can also go to echomeansbusiness.com, sign up. There's a, lots of great rewards going on. There's a special deal from Nick there that you can get if you're a member. Um, there's all kinds of free stuff that you can get. You know, like I said, free forums. You know, we're, they got podcasts on there. You can go through your local podcast and listen to this perfect audio of this, you know, and all kinds of different stories out there. So I want to thank everybody again for tonight and uh, hope to see you guys all in a couple of weeks. If not, come find us at GIE. We'll have something good for you guys there. All right. Good night, guys.